Hello friends, welcome to the Pathology Insights. In my previous uh, video of the amyloidosis, I have already discussed about the physical and the biochemical properties of the amyloid fibrillary protein. And in this video, I'll be discussing about the pathogenesis and the classification of the amyloidosis. Morphology I'll be discussing in my next video. So as we know, amyloidosis means it is uh, the deposition of abnormally folded uh, proteins or the misfolded proteins. So normally the misfolded proteins will be removed or degraded by ubiquitin proteasome pathway. These misfolded proteins which are produced will be attached to the ubiquitin, uh, ubiquitin molecules in the cytoplasm and this ubiquitin will direct it into the proteasome where these misfolded proteins will be degraded. This is a normal mechanism uh, by which the cell will be uh, removing of this misfolded proteins. But if there is any excess production of the misfolded protein or if they are not degraded properly, then this misfolded protein aggregates. They polymerize, they form the fibrils. And uh, after the formation of the fibrils, we have accumulation of some other molecules like proteoglycans, glycosaminoglycans, and also some plasma uh, serum amyloid uh, P protein. Uh, and there will be some conformational change in this fibril. They get the cross beta pleated sheet structure and they form the amyloid fibrils. So this is how uh, the amyloid fibril is formed. Now when we see the pathogenesis, the protein which is deposited, the misfolded protein which is deposited comes under three categories. Either it can be excess, abnormal excess production of the normal proteins which aggregate leading to amyloidosis or it can be the normal protein which is abnormally metabolized which gets deposited and the third one is it can be a mutant protein which cannot be dissociated or uh, disaggregated so it again starts accumulating so we have uh, three uh, types of the pathogenesis so when we see the normal protein which is abnormal or excessively produced in that we have uh, the conditions like in the plasma cell tumors which will be producing the light chain immunoglobulin light chain which aggregates and they give rise to the amyloid light chain protein then the, the second one is in the chronic inflammation where we have chronic inflammatory cells like macrophages in the monocytes which will be producing the cytokines interleukin 1 and 6 which stimulates the uh, hepatocytes to produce serum amyloid associated protein from which after the protolysis we will be getting amyloid associated protein that is AA protein. The third one is um, beta 2 microglobulin which is a component of a major histocompatibility complex class 1 molecule. So when the, in the chronic inflammations when the beta 2 uh, microglobulin uh, is present in the serum normally it will be filtered off but if it is uh, not filtered or if it uh, usually with this condition we see in the patients who are undergoing the long-term dialysis where the beta 2 microglobulin cannot be filtered so it starts accumulating in the uh, in the blood the levels increases in the blood and then slowly this protein will be getting deposited in the different parts so this beta 2 microglobulin it can form the polymers when there is an acidic ph or also there can be a proteolysis which gives rise to a component of beta 2 microglobulin which can also polymerize giving rise to amyloid beta 2 microglobulin and third one is the transthyretin molecule so normal transthyretin molecule which is a tetramer which is dissociated into a monomer and this uh, monomer it forms it undergoes polymerization and forms the amyloid fibril what we call it as amyloid transthyretin molecule amyloid transthyretin protein so these are the conditions where the normal proteins are uh, accumulated which leads to amyloidosis the next one is normal protein which is abnormally metabolized in that we have transmembrane glycoprotein in the neurons and the astrocytes so this transmembrane protein which is normally present it will be metabolized into a soluble component but if we have alpha and the beta secretase activity it will be broken down into uh, a beta monomers which are uh, not soluble so they start aggregating and they form the amyloid fibril 
Then third one is production of the mutant proteins in the normal amounts and which cannot be degraded or and they form the aggregate. This is we see uh, when there is a production of the mutant transthyretin molecule that this mutant transthyretin it cannot be dissociated. So it starts accumulating producing the amyloid fibril. So these are um, the three types how the amyloid fibrillary protein is produced. Then how the amyloid fibrillary protein causes the damage is either it is because of the accumulation, extracellular accumulation of the amyloid fibril causing the pressure atrophy on the cell so that the function of the tissue is lost. So it can cause pressure atrophy or it deposited in gets deposited in the wall of the blood vessels causing ischemia to the organ uh, to which this blood vessel is supplying. So it causes infarction there. And another thing is it directly causes toxicity to the cells. Like in the Alzheimer's disease, we have deposition of um, these amyloid fibrils in the brain substance forming the plaques or they can be present within the neurons forming the neurofibrillary tangles and they are also deposited in the vessel wall causing the ischemia. So this is prefibrillary oligomers which are injurious to the cells and another one is direct cytotoxicity when these light chains are deposited in the cardiac muscles they directly cause damage to the cell. So mechanism of damage is either by pressure atrophy or accumulation in the vessel wall leading to ischemia or causing direct cytotoxicity to the cells. Then coming to the classification, we have three main types of the amyloidosis. Either it will be generalized or systemic amyloidosis or it is localized amyloidosis and hereditary amyloidosis. Now in the generalized or systemic amyloidosis, again we have three categories, primary amyloidosis, secondary amyloidosis and hemodialysis associated amyloidosis. In generalized amyloidosis, we have deposition of the amyloid fibrillary protein in the different parts on the different tissues. Whereas in the localized amyloidosis, we have deposition in a single organ or the tissue. It's not generalized. So this under this, we have senile cerebral amyloidosis or the endocrine amyloidosis, which we see in the medullary carcinoma thyroid, type 2 diabetes, and another condition is isolated atrial amyloidosis. So we have senile cerebral amyloidosis, endocrine amyloidosis, and isolated atrial amyloidosis. Coming to the hereditary amyloidosis, in this also we have three conditions, familial Mediterranean fever, familial amyloidotic neuropathies, and systemic senile amyloidosis. So coming to the first one, that is generalized systemic amyloidosis. In this we have, uh, as I told you, we have three uh, categories, primary, secondary, and hemodialysis associated. Under the primary amyloidosis, we have the condition like the plasma cell disorders, where the tumorous uh, plasma cells will be producing immunoglobulin light chain. So precursor protein is immunoglobulin light chain and the major fibril protein here is amyloid light chain protein. And then in the secondary amyloidosis, this we see in the chronic inflammatory conditions. So there are many, many chronic inflammatory conditions, out of which few important ones are rheumatoid arthritis, other connective tissue disorders such as ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, in the drug abusers specifically, the people who use the heroin and in the solid tumors, specifically in the renal cell carcinomas and the Hodgkin's lymphoma, we see this type of the amyloidosis. So here, the chronic inflammatory cells, they will be producing cytokines, which will stimulate the hepatocytes to produce the precursor protein that is serum amyloid associated protein. This precursor protein is either um, it undergoes a proteolysis normally. So if there is a defect and there is an incomplete breakdown of a serum amyloid associated protein, then we have a formation of amyloid associated protein. So there can be either the enzyme defect or there can be structural abnormality of serum amyloid associated protein so that it is resistant to the degradation. So from this precursor protein, we get amyloid associated protein. Then third one is hemodialysis associated amyloidosis. This we see in the patients with the chronic renal failure who are undergoing long term hemodialysis. So the hemodialysis, the membrane, what, uh, what is being used, it does not filter the beta 2 microglobulin. This is a component of class 1 MHC molecule. 
so when this protein is not filtered the level of the protein increases in the blood and the in the serum the level increases and slowly this beta 2 microglobulin it gets deposited in the different organs so uh, the beta 2 microglobulin component of the class 1 mhc molecule is a precursor protein that leads to amyloid beta 2 microglobulin that was about the systemic amyloidosis then coming to the localized amyloidosis as i told you here we have deposition in single organ or the tissue so we have three conditions in this senile cerebral amyloidosis which we see in the alzheimer's disease and here the precursor protein is amyloid precursor protein which is a transmembrane glycoprotein which is broken down and then it gives rise to the amyloid fibrillary protein that is a beta protein now this a beta protein is deposited in the brain substance and also in the neurons and also in the blood vessels second category is endocrine amyloid which we see in the medullary carcinoma thyroid pancreatic islet cell tumors and type 2 diabetes in medullary carcinoma thyroid we have the deposition of calcitonin whereas in the other two conditions we have the deposition of islet amyloid peptide so the major fibrillary protein is amyloid calcitonin protein and another one is amyloid islet amyloid peptide third condition is isolated atrial amyloidosis where we have deposition of atrial natriuretic factor in the walls of the atrium so here the protein is Uh, amyloid atrial natriuretic factor and in the hereditary amyloidosis again we have three conditions the first one is familial mediterranean fever this is an auto inflammatory syndrome it is an autosomal recessive condition which is mainly characterized by the inflammation of the serosal surfaces like pleura peritoneum and the synovial and here we have Uh, the increased prediction of the cytokine interleukin 1 which again stimulates the hepatocytes to produce serum amyloid associated protein which leads to deposition of amyloid associated protein now he, uh, the next one is familial, uh, familial amyloidotic neuropathy which is an autosomal dominant condition and here the patient will have familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy here we have deposition of amyloid in the peripheral nerves and in the autonomic nerves so here the precursor protein is mutant transthyretin molecule produced by the liver so the major fibril protein is amyloid transthyretin molecule amyloid transthyretin protein now the last one is systemic senile amyloidosis here um, we have the monomers of the normal transthyretin molecules which get deposited so again we, here we have amyloid transthyretin protein only which forms the major fibril protein so that finishes about the pathogenesis and classification so if we see the pathogenesis the mechanism is three me three mechanisms are there either it is abnormal excess production of the normal proteins which get deposited so in that we have uh, um, plasma cell tumors producing al amyloid then chronic inflammation producing aa amyloid class 1 mhc molecules that will be producing amyloid beta 2 microglobulin a normal transthyretin molecule which will be producing amyloid transthyretin then normal protein which is abnormally metabolized in this we have uh, transmembrane glycoprotein amyloid associated protein which we see in the neurons and the astrocytes which leads to formation of the beta amyloid protein and the third mechanism is production of the mutant protein itself which cannot be disaggregated in that we have the mutant transthyretin molecule so we have amyloid transthyretin in this so the classification we have three major classifications systemic amyloidosis hereditary and localized amyloidosis in the systemic amyloidosis we have primary secondary and hemodialysis in the primary amyloidosis the major fibrillary protein is amyloid light chain secondary amyloidosis it is amyloid associated protein hemodialysis associated amyloidosis it is a beta 2 microglobulin whereas in the hereditary amyloidosis we have familial mediterranean fever where you have uh, the deposition of amyloid associated protein then familial amyloidotic neuropathy we have amyloid transthyretin molecule then you have seni systemic senile amyloidosis where again we have the transthyretin only which gets deposited and in the localized amyloidosis we have senile cerebral amyloidosis where uh, the major fibril protein is amyloid beta protein in endocrine we have 
calcitonin which is deposited in the medullary carcinoma thyroid and we have amyloid islet amyloid peptide protein which is deposited in the type 2 diabetes then we have isolated atrial amyloidosis where we have deposition of atrial natriuretic factor so this is the classification which consists of three major categories and under three major categories again each one has three minor categories thank you friends so this finishes our classification in my next video i'll be discussing about the morphology thank you for listening patiently